So guys, I just benchmarked the very first Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 running inside a Qualcomm reference device. And let me tell you something, Apple definitely has a lot to worry about. I'm going to show you all the benchmarks in comparison to Apple's A19 Pro and the Snapdragon 8 Elite. And there are some interesting numbers to see there. So without wasting any time, if you're watching me for the first time, I'm Ashat. This is Tracking Take English and I'm in beautiful Hawaii. Let's go. Now, of course, you'll have to wait a little bit for the benchmarks. I'm going to tease a little. But before that, let's talk about the core architecture of the 8 Elite Gen 5 platform itself. So what you get is a Qualcomm Orion CPU with two prime cores. And these prime cores are clocked at 4.6 gigahertz, which is possibly the highest for any CPU inside a mobile SoC. You also get six performance cores. And this time, they are clocked at 3.63 gigahertz as well. The Arduino GPU has seen a considerable bump. It's running at 1.2 gigahertz. And it's a split architecture. And more importantly, Importantly, it supports the full Unreal uh, you know, Engine Gen 5 platform too. Apart from that, you also get the Snapdragon X85 5G modem and the Qualcomm Fast Connect 7900, uh, 7900 with Wi-Fi 7 support as well. Now, talking about the Qualcomm reference design uh, phone itself, I will show you the specs on the screen and even the reference design phone specs are pretty impressive, especially the 24 gigs of RAM that it's rocking. By the way, the reference design didn't have it, but the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 can actually support displays up to QHD plus resolution and 240 hertz refresh rate as well. I mean, it's going to be mind blowing and I don't know which brand is probably going to use that for the first time. I think Asus and Red Magic will probably do it first. And I'm really looking forward to actually testing those devices out even if they don't, you know, land in India. Interestingly, leaks are pointing out to the fact that the OnePlus 15 could come with a 165 hertz refresh rate display and it'll be a proper 165 hertz probably with the system you are running at 165 hertz as well. So that'll be very interesting to see. Of course, a lot of these specs sound crazy, right? But let me blow your mind with the benchmark numbers now, which is what I you. So first we ran Android 2 version 11 on the 8 Elite Gen 5 and we got a score of 4.3 million which is a massive you know jump over the 2.92 million that we managed to run on the Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra which has Snapdragon 8 Elite for Galaxy. Now in Geekbench as well the single core score is definitely higher than that of the Snapdragon 8 Elite but it is in touching distance of the A19 Pro which is what surprised me the most. But just take a look at that multi-core score it crosses 12,000 points which is higher than any platform out there, whether you take the A19 Pro or the Snapdragon 8 Elite, of course, and even the newly announced MediaTek Dimensity 9500. Remember how I told you that the Arduino GPU is more powerful? Well, in the Solar Bay test, just take a look at the difference in the average FPS scores. It's nearly 20% higher than that of the A19 Pro and the 8 Elite. We also ran the AI22 test again. Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 is the highest. We also ran the browser bench speedometer test, which is basically like a browser benchmark. This is the first time we're running it. And again, the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 is the highest. You also get 24 GB of RAM inside the reference device, which might not be true for most 8 Elite Gen 5 phones. But when these phones come out, we'll run the tests again and we'll give you fresh new scores. So you'll have to wait for that. And of course, stay subscribed. By the way, we also tested out the 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Stress Test. And in this test, again, uh, you know, if you look at the best loop score and the FPS that the 8 Elite Gen 5 achieved, it is much higher than what the A19 Pro can do. But because it is that much higher, it also throttles the performance, at least with the QRD that we saw. So brands will have to play around with the performance tuning to ensure that it doesn't throttle as much and the stability is much better, but still heartening numbers to see. So what did I tell you guys? The benchmark numbers? Yeah, they're pretty impressive, just like the weather here in Hawaii. But more importantly, we have to run some real world tests as well. So when the actual phones come out and when the proper tests are run, that's when you'll get the actual performance of the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. Now, what are the phones that are expected to come? Now, firstly, the Xiaomi 17 series definitely is coming really soon. OnePlus 15, Realme GT 8 series. And of course, there'll be Vivo's phones, the X300 Ultra, the Find X9 Ultra, and the Samsung Galaxy S26 series, including the S26 Ultra is also expected to come, all of which will have the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. Now, there's one leak about the S26 Ultra that you guys might have seen, and that is the support for APV codec. Now, this is Samsung's own developed codec, which is supposed to compete against 
Apple's ProRes. Fun fact, the APV codec will also be supported in the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 chip by default, which means that other brands could also make use of this codec, which means that maybe the X300 Ultra or the Find X9 Ultra, which by the way is expected to launch globally, could also come with support for the APV codec. So yeah, this was it about the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. What do you guys think? Does Apple have to worry about this performance? I think they do. I think they do. All right. More coming soon from Hawaii. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.